from animal hides to bejeweled animals. Bling is Sarah Tassir's business, and it's everywhere. From these $3,300 rings to this $150,000 necklace. The 46-year-old designs and sells her own line of jewelry, whether elegant, quirky, or avant-garde. Well, as jewelers also have to be mindful of the latest technologies that are out there. And in this ring, we've used a really fine piece of technology where the front of the ring uh, pulls at the back, creating a flapping sensation like this. Creates a wonderful flapping butterfly. And it can be used to sort of be flirtatious if you want. Pakistan-born Sara grew up the daughter of a rich and important man. But she didn't need any help setting up her first jewellery store in 2007 in a home country. The startup costs came from First Capital Securities, which was a company in Pakistan I started when I was 25 years old. And uh, I invested about $20,000, and when I sold it, it was $100,000. There were a lot of people who said, maybe this won't work. And I just decided to do it, and I didn't take financing from anybody. And I proved them wrong, and I proved myself right. After ringing up $5 million in sales, Sarah moved to Singapore in 2010 and opened her shop here one year later. The jeweler is now a permanent resident. Her attachment to the Lion City began 30 years ago when she won a scholarship to study at the United World College. I first came to Singapore in 1987. I was just a teenager. I began to love the place, the sounds, the food, the people. And um, I just wanted to make it home one day. And I have traveled around the world. Uh, but coming to Singapore was a conscious decision. And we came here to settle and I started my business here. So it was kind of coming back home for me. Sarah's decision to permanently settle down in Singapore was also for safety reasons. Especially after her father, a Pakistani politician, was murdered in her home country. He was known as the Lion of the Punjab for the brave stance he took. She was born and bred in Pakistan, worked in London, New York and Hong Kong, and now considers Singapore home. Jeweler Sarah Tassir spent her teens studying here in the 80s, and made friends for life since then. She was 16, and we wanted to introduce her and her father to our local food. And she was just lapping everything up like a sponge. And I think that same quality has stuck with her after 30 years. Her designs and the way she's living her life here in Singapore, that curiosity is still there. That's so much like her father, you know, always on the go, always looking, you know, to learn new things. Sarah's late father, Selman Tassir, was a Pakistani politician and businessman. He was assassinated in 2008 while he was governor of Punjab. This is a lion pendant, which I made in memory of my father. It's a very strong, courageous lion, and he was known as the lion of the Punjab for the brave stance he took. It shows kindness as well as strength, and uh, I keep it in the shop so it reminds me of him, and it looks after all the other little animals I have in here. I make about 70 to 100 pieces of animal-themed jewelry every year because that allows us to really use many, many gemstones to bring out the color and the personality of the animal. Do you have any new animal earrings? Singapore women moved on from just simple design and they now like my animal collection a lot. They love the 3D dimensions, the different personalities of every creature I create and they like to make them their own.
So if that dragon that I have created will speak to them and will become like a talking point when they wear the piece, their friends will admire it. These animal-themed pieces range from $1,000 to $25,000. Sara sells about 10 pieces every month. This is a leopard ring with an opal in a very rare colour. And it's a one-of-a-kind piece made by Sarah, and it's part of her animal series. But I actually came very, very late to jewellery for the first 35 years of my life. And I was very plain, I was like a plain Jane. My mom was attending some of these um, events that Sarah hosts regularly, and so one day I followed her along, and Sarah had arranged a lovely little hay for us. I just fell in love with her pieces. I saw how they enhanced my overall look, and you know, as a woman, you feel so much more confident when something sparkly and glittery is on your fingers, and everyone's looking at them, of course, especially the guys. A pendant like this starts with a sketch. It's a lion's tooth, and came from one that died of natural causes in Africa. Sarah plans to fix an amethyst quartz on top of it. Gems come in the rough from Sri Lanka and Myanmar and are polished in Thailand. The precious stones are then placed in 18 karat gold settings. 80% of her jewellery pieces are assembled in Italy and Hong Kong, while the rest are made here in Singapore. The mother of three makes it a point to work with local craftsmen here. It's a difficult relationship because a lot of them don't speak anything except Cantonese, which I don't speak. So we have a sign language. The chain. And some of my staff help me communicate with them. But they're very sweet and they're, they're extremely accommodating. And they're fantastic craftsmen. Sarah has integrated herself well into Singapore society, to my mind. Um, she's got so many friends that are local, local ladies, um, not just expatriate ladies or your um, usual run of Thai Thais and socialites, but really ladies from a whole range of backgrounds. And then these people go on to form their own friendships. So really, Sarah brings people together in wonderful ways through jewellery. Keen to attract more customers, Sarah hit upon a gem of an idea. Four years after opening her shop in 2011, she unveiled another boutique at the Fullerton Hotel. That was in 2015. But business was slow. Six months later, she shut it down. That taught me many, many lessons. The first one was that my jewellery is quite personalised and people like to come and see me, so they would, wouldn't probably go to an outlet which is, doesn't have that same level of personalisation. Also, the financial district was not a place where people really go to shop. They were not in the mood of shopping. So I did learn quite a few lessons and I'm going to put that down as one of the important ones. Sarah also learned she needed to milk the benefits of social media. So uh, we are on Instagram, Instagram Stories and on Facebook. And Instagram gives us a chance to put like slideshows, show light in jewellery, sh show how it's worn. Another advantage of social media is that jewellery is qu quite intimidating, especially fine jewellery with the price points. So social media allows clients to experience the jewellery without really coming to the shop and being put in a position they might feel uncomfortable in. And as far as trends go, Sarah says tasseled bling is all the rage now. And so is restoring old jewellery. She likes the idea of modernising her customers' outdated pieces and family heirlooms. So I took the smaller piece of jade and then I, and I added a diamond disc to it and I took the larger piece of jade and I used Helen's own diamonds to create an earring that she could really use on a daily basis and remind her of her family. Mine is a relationship-based business. The relationships I have with my clients and the friendships I have are very important to me and that's the biggest reward. When you have a business, you have to mind it. You can't leave it be, it's not going to run on its own. It's a daily effort. I have to plan not only for today, but for the future.